We have a special treat today. Our children's church pastor, Sister Debbie Bentley, is going to minister a very special word to the adults and also to the children today. I've been really looking forward to this, and so let's just give her a big welcome this morning. Amen. Before I do anything else, I want all the kids to come up here and sit on the floor in front of me here on the red carpet. I already warned them about this. If you're a child and you usually go to children's church, I want you to come and sit up here on the red carpet facing me. Don't face your parents. First of all, I want you to listen to me. This is a word not only for your parents, but it's for you. And so that's why I want you up here. Besides, and your parents don't have to be always looking at you and wondering what you're doing back there in your seat. <laughs> so anyway, I know I'm way up here. I'm not on your level like I usually am. But you can all see me, right? All right, this message was actually born out of a failed attempt at a prophecy that I was supposed to give in the fall. And I was overcome so much by the prophetic anointing. I, I remember I was standing back there towards the back in the middle, and uh, I almost fell to the ground. It was that strong. And uh, I should have crawled up here to give it. But instead, I miss my cue. And you know, if, if you're in a, in a service like this and you wait just a few minutes longer than what you should wait, the time is past a lot of times for you to give the message at the right time. And so I missed my cue. And of course, I was upset. When you don't obey God, you go home and you're just really devastated because... You know, my, my whole life, I want to obey God in everything he tells me to do. So I came back in the church that afternoon. Nobody else was here. It was dark. Everybody was gone. And I got up here on the platform, and I stood here, and I gave the message to an empty church. You may ask me why did I need to do that? Because the word of God is so powerful, it goes out and it changes things in the atmosphere. Regardless of whether anybody was here to hear it or not. I believed that that word got spoken into this building, into this church, into you who were not here to hear it. And the following week, Chuck Pierce was here. I don't know how many of you were here to hear him. But much of what he said that night was what I had prophesied that afternoon in this building. You know, the word of God is powerful. How did God create the universe? He spoke it into being. That's why your words are so important. What you say can change things for the bad or can change things for the good. We want to always change things for the good, don't we? But you know, God is the redeemer. And so he redeemed this message and he gave it to me to preach to you this morning. It's not exactly what I said that afternoon. But it's close, and in fact, he's added some things to it. God wants us to experience his glory. Amen. His church in these days is to exhibit his glory in the earth. We are to be a glorious church. Amen. Dennis and I, when we were young, 
Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> Dennis and I, when we were young and, and had kids that were babies, we actually were in Indiana when my son was born, and we attended a church up there called the Glorious Church. Has a, a, a certain ring to it, doesn't it? The church of this day should be glorious, and that's what God wants us to become. In Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 4, and then verse 19, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. The sun shall no more light shall no more be thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Who is this scripture referring to? It's referring to Israel, but it's also referring to the church. Since we are the people of faith, are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. I want to talk about light this morning. All you kids, say the word light. 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 Say it again, light. light. What is this? Light. Can you see it? Light. You can, can't you? But what if I do this? Can you see it? You can't see it anymore. What do I have to do for you to be able to see it? I have to take my hand off of it. Y'all, you, all you remember the, the little song that we sing in children's church? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. What are you supposed to do? Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, No, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, how many of you know how to do a light stick? How many of you know? Eli, come on up here for a minute. All right, Esther, come on. All right, how do you do them? How do you do it? How do you make it work? You crack it. Do it. There it goes. <laughs> and you shake it. Hold it up so everybody can see it. Hold it up. What did they have to do to make the light shine? They had to break it. They had to break it. You know, in order for us to have the glory of God, we have to break the light. Or God has to break us. Because it's not going to glow if it's not broken. Amen. David wrote in Psalm 51, 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So God has to break us, but how does he do that? Okay, you guys can take them back down there and sit down. You can keep it. <laughs> you can keep it.
In order for us to keep the light, we have to be broken before God. And being broken before God is allowing God to have us, body, soul, and spirit, all the time. It's not doing what we want to do. It's doing what God wants us to do. Now, God is light, in him is no darkness at all. He is the light, and God generates light in himself. But we are reflectors of the light. All of you kids been in science class? You haven't been in science class? <laughs> I used to love science class. All right, in science class, you learned that the sun, this big ball that's in the sky that keeps the earth alive, doing what it's doing, it is the light. And the moon, does the moon have light in itself? No. What does the moon do? The moon reflects off the sun. So if you don't have the sun, the moon does not have its light, right? Amen. Well, God is not the sun. The sun is not God. Some people worship the sun in different cultures. But the sun is not God. God created the sun. But you can compare God to the sun in one of, of the verses in the Bible. It says, the Lord God is a sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. So we are his creatures. We are to reflect the light of the sun. Who is who? The light is God. And we, his creatures, are to reflect that light. Now, it also says in the scripture that I just read out of Isaiah 60, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So we have the light, but what is glory? Glory is a step up from the light. How many of you have ever seen a light table? Anybody? It's a table that has a light underneath it, and it comes up. And you can, nobody's ever seen that? Not at Peter Piper Pizza? <laughs> or any place like that? I can look at the light table, but if I want to experience the, the glory, I have to stand on the light table. And the light will come up around me. That's kind of what glory is. Glory is splendor, brightness, magnificence. Glory is light enhanced to a point of transcendence. Transcendence is that which surpasses everything else, excels or exceeds beyond. It is the place of supernatural experience. In other words, it's a step up, a higher level than light. So light is beholding, but glory is immersion. Now there's the glory that's exclusively reserved for the Lord and exists only in him. He said in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. But what does that really mean? It means that God is the one who is to be worshipped alone. We don't steal God's worship. We don't have people worship us, do we? We are the creature. We worship our creator, God. But God wants us to experience his glory. How much glory does he want us to have? He says he is our inheritance. 
In Psalm 16, verse 5, it says, The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. Ephesians 1.11 says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. 2 Peter 1.4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these he might be partakers of the divine nature. In Hebrews chapter 2, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Verse 10 says, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons into glory. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. In Colossians 3, verse 4, it says that. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Is Mazzy here? Where are you, Mazzy? Where are you? <laughs> Can you come up and help me for a minute? Can you hold the mirror for me? What do you see in the mirror? You see yourself. All right, keep holding it. Keep holding the mirror. So God's glory even his light is transferred to us as we behold him. When Jason Lee Jones was here, he made a statement, what you behold is what you become. He actually made a song about it because I've been listening to that song a lot the last few weeks. We are God's sons and daughters. A father willingly gives everything he can to his children. Don't you do that with your children? You give everything you can to them. Why do we think that God is any different? He gives everything he can to us, his sons and his daughters. What has God the Father given to his son? Jesus Christ, everything. He's given us everything. Get that in your spirit. He's given us everything. What has he given us, kids? Everything. Everything. So God is light. He's also given us his glory. Say that. Glory. Glory. God's given us his glory. glory. What has God given us? His glory. And what is God? He's light. Say that. Light. Light. Hold your light sticks up, you that have them. God is light. And he's given us his glory. glory. Okay. We got that down now, kids? I'm going to ask you at the end. All right, we're going to go on. I want to talk about presence. The Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. In Psalm 140, 13, it says, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. What is the presence of God? Okay, hold your mirror up, Mazzy. I'm going to go back here. Hold it up, hold it up. Start, keep looking at yourself. Can you see me yet? Can you? No? What about now? What about now? Can you see me yet? 
What about now? Am I getting closer? Am I getting closer? <laughs> now, now you can see me real good, can't you? All right, you can go sit down. That's what presence is. God comes with his presence and he gets closer and closer and closer. You might be looking at yourself, but all of a sudden the presence of God surrounds you. What is the presence of God? God is with us all the time, whether we feel him or not, but there is a tangible presence that can be felt. The feeling is like a blanket or a weightiness. Your kids ever been covered up by a blanket because you're cold? You feel that warmth? How many of you have gone camping and that's what's happened? Sometimes one feels weak, you want to fall to the ground just like I did when I had that anointing come on me. Sometimes there's a bubbly sensation in the pit of your stomach. Anybody ever felt that when you come in the church and you feel like it's just bubbling and bubbling? You have? Anybody else? You have? You have? It's not, a, it's not a bad feeling, it's a good feeling. It's like somebody just poured over you a, a bunch of sizzly soda or something. You want to do something with it. But sometimes God wants us to do something with it. Sometimes he just wants us to, to enjoy his presence. But what does God do when we feel his presence? He changes us. He fills us with joy. We felt that this morning during worship, didn't we? He refreshes us. Sometimes he gives us direction. He also wants to protect us. All right, let me compare this again. Let's talk about light again. I said light was like beholding, like seeing something. But the glory was immersion. Say, you, say you're, you're, you're looking at a swimming pool, and you're looking at it. You're seeing it. But what do you all want to do, really? You want to swim in it. You want to jump into it. That's like the glory, jumping into it. But then you know what presence is? It's like getting a cold glass of water and drinking it. So God wants us to behold him, but he also wants us to jump into what he has for us. But he doesn't only want us to jump into it, he wants us to drink from that presence. Because he wants to fill us up. What does it say about his spirit? It's like rivers of living water that bubbles up into everlasting life. I see you, Dylan. <laughs> They're my grandchildren. I can talk to them. was my grandson Dylan's birthday a couple of days ago. So, so he's been all excited for several days. All right, you probably wonder what this has been sitting up here all service. And so, uh, actually, let me see. Julian, you want to come up here and tell me? I actually should have started this several days ago because it didn't get as red as I wanted it to, but this is celery sitting in some red water. Can you see the red coming up through there? Yeah. You can, right? He's my witness. 
Anybody else want to come? We need a double witness. <laughs> let, let me pick a girl. All right, right here. Come on up. You can come up too. We'll have a triple witness. All right, girls, look at this. Can you see it? Can you see the red coming up through there? All right, I'm going to, just a second, I want you to tell them all so they can hear you if it's really red or not. All right, is it red? Yeah. Is it red? Yep. Is this working? <laughs> well, it says it's on. I guess it's not. There it is. Okay. Is it red? Yes. 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 Okay. Now you hear it from, from all of them. Okay, you guys can go sit down now. All right. Now, what was all that for? I wanted them to tell you if it's red because this is sitting in this red water. And the longer it sits in there, the redder it's going to get. Actually, it will get so red that it will look almost entirely red. You'll see the red streaks going up. You can see them at the top now. Because it's sitting there in this water, it's absorbing what it's sitting in. Right, Lisa? <laughs> if you want to experience the presence of God, then you have to sit in his presence. And the longer you sit in his presence, the more you're going to have his presence around you and surrounding you. If you don't sit in it, it's not going to happen. Amen. How do we sit in the presence of God? Jesus said in John chapter 15, abide in me and I in you. How do we do that? In Psalm 16 verse 11, it says, in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, I think sometimes we're afraid of the presence of God because we just don't know what he's going to tell us. <laughs> you feel that way sometimes, you know? God, I don't know what you're going to tell me. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if my life's going to be fun anymore. <laughs> How wrong is that? To think that way, you know, living for the Lord is so much fun. Yeah. Right, Joanne? <laughs> it's more fun than anything you can ever imagine. Because God created you for, for who you are. And if you can, can understand what he wants you to do, then your life is going to make sense. If you don't know where you're going in life... then you need to sit in God's presence. He wants us to give him time. You know, that's hard to do with all of us who are so busy, is to give God time. But he wants your time. How much time do you spend watching TV? How much time do you spend going to a ball game? And yet when God asks for an hour a day of your time, we can't give it because we're too busy. Yeah. Maybe some of you have tried to pray and you're, you're like, well, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of boring. But when you sit in the presence of God, <laughs> it's not boring. Amen. But you have to sit there. You have to put yourself there in order for 
it to happen. It's like this celery. If this celery did not sit in this red water, it would not become red. It would be the same as it always was, but it has to sit there. And the longer it sits there, the redder it's going to get. That's the way it is with the Lord. The longer we sit in his presence, the more we're going to receive from him, the more we're going to become like him. Amen. You are what you behold. You know, I've been doing some research for the past few nights. I really don't know why I started doing this. You know, you get on the internet at night and you just start clicking on stuff that you're interested in. Mona knows about that because she does, she spends hours. But anyway, and so uh, I started looking up what it was like for the high priest to go into the Holy of Holies. And the high priest in the temple could only go in there how many times, kids? Anybody know? Once a year. And it could only be him. So he was the only one, once a year, that could go in behind the curtain or the veil. Now, I know in the tabernacle in the wilderness... It was a smaller, on a smaller scale. So I started re doing some research about the veil in, in the temple when the temple was built. Because that was a massive structure. How big did that veil have to be? It was huge. They said it was as thick as, as a man's hand, so it was like four or five inches thick. And I also read some things where there wasn't just one, but there was two because it was so massive that you couldn't really push it aside like you could in the tabernacle and walk in. And so they had two, and you had to kind of wind your way around to the back. Now, that's not, I don't know if that's completely true or not. Brother Marshall might know, but I started thinking about what it was like for the high priest to wind his way around the veil to go into the Holy of Holies. Now, remember, he was going to meet God face to face, pretty much, once a year behind the veil in the Holy of Holies. What did he feel like? Especially if he was a new high priest and he never done it before, what did he feel like? And I started feeling that anticipation, that excitement, that oh, I'm going to meet God behind this veil here. And he had to prepare himself. He had to wear a special garment. The high priest did not wear the normal clothes that he normally War. And I also read that he only wore that particular garment for that particular year. And then they set it aside, and the next year they made a new one entirely. What did he feel like? What do you think he felt like? Nervous? Fear? Maybe? What was God's awesome presence like? And he had incense smoke, and so the smoke was kind of clouding the Ark of the Covenant with the, with the mercy seat, and he was to sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on that mercy seat. And the Shekinah glory of God lit up the Holy of Holies. What was that like? <gasps> we think... How awesome, how awesome. But what happened when Jesus died on the cross? What ripped into from the top to the bottom? That curtain, that veil was ripped into because God was saying he's given us access now to that holy of holies. Yeah. 
the presence of God is not just for one person once a year. It's for all of us. And God's spirit dwells within us. And do we take advantage of that? Most of the time we don't. Because we're too busy. We have access to the most important spot in the universe. And we don't take advantage of it. Because we're too busy. But God wants us to take advantage of that place. God's presence is for everyone. God's glory is for everyone who will believe in him and receive him. God is light. God wants us to experience his glory. And he wants us to sit in his presence. Amen. Kids, I know you're getting tired, but I want you to say it one more time, then you can go back to your seat. God is what? Light. light. He wants us to experience what? His glory. glory. And he wants us to sit where? In his, in his presence. Okay, you can go back and sit with your parents now. You, you guys did a great job. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for your presence. Because I feel it right now, Lord. I pray, Lord, that everyone else does too. Lord, you have given us such a gift. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness for not receiving that gift a lot of the time. Because we're just too busy, Lord because we don't consider what you've really given to us. Lord, all of the people in the Old Testament would have given anything to be able to feel and experience what we do today. Lord, your spirit did not live inside of them like it does with us. Father, we thank you for what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we ask you, Lord, to help us to live each and every day as you would have us to live it. Lord, help us not to fear to hear your voice because we are your sons and your daughters. And you have given us everything. We are seated with you in heavenly places. And Lord, you are making us that glorious church without spot or wrinkle to be that light in this world that you want us to be. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Ito rafa son de refsi hi shon de karosita raba ko shan de kisi hi. I rosola raba ko shehera raba ko si hala raba ko si hi. For I truly am the light of this world, saith God. And I am the light within you. And I do want you to experience my glory. For my glory is transcendent and is above. And it comes to you through the power of my spirit. Therefore, saith the Lord, I want you to experience that glory. I want you to see my light. I want you to have that presence that you walk in each and every day. Therefore, do not fear, saith God. Do not fear me. 
for I am your father, and you are not orphan children. I have given you my name, and I have given you my spirit. Therefore, walk in it, saith the Lord, as I have commissioned you to do. If you are here this morning, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I do not want to close this service without giving you an opportunity to come forward. Is anybody here this morning that's never asked Jesus into your life and you'd like to do that today? Let me see your hand if anybody's in here. Is anybody in here today Maybe you've accepted the Lord in the past, but you are not walking with him right now. And you need to make a decision today to begin again. You know, God is the Redeemer. Jesus wants to give you a fresh start. Is anybody in here today that needs to do that? Can you come up front? Anybody that wants to do that today, I want you to come up front. And just stand up here. Anybody else? I have a feeling she's not the only one. Anybody else today? that needs to have a fresh start. You can start fresh today. Anybody else? <laughs> we'll wait a few minutes here. Anybody else need to come up and join this dear lady up here in the front? Anybody else? Anybody else? You know that you're not sitting in the presence of God. You know that his glory is something that you really desire. Anybody else want to come and join these two up here? All right, let's just pray with them. Everybody can pray this prayer after me and with them. Father in heaven, I ask you to receive me anew today. I ask you to forgive me for not following you like I've needed to. I ask you to wash away those sins by the blood of Jesus and help me by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk with you every day. I want to listen to your voice and I want to obey you. And I thank you, Lord, for giving me a new start today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, last invitation. Anybody up here that just wants to experience God's glory today in his presence, I want you to come up. <laughs> I knew I'd get some takers with that. More, more so, more takers. <laughs> I 
I put myself in there too. Father, you see all of these people that are up here, Lord. And Lord, they're all here to experience a wave of your glory. And so, Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name to let them experience that. As I wave my hands over this group right now, I pray, Father, that they would experience your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for giving it to them. Thank you, Father, for waves of glory to wash over them right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it right now, right now, right now in Jesus' name, right now. Experience God's glory. Experience it right now, right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Experience God's glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. If you're here today and you need healing, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Thank you, Father. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, Lord, oh, God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Now, I want everybody to take a hand next to you. And we're going to pray for each other right now. If you can. Father, I pray, I pray a blessing over this people right now. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for ministering to them. I thank you, Father, for touching them in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.